Welcome to another episode. I'm Terry. This is not really me. It's just an emoji I created. It's really not me. It's more like a figment of my imagination. But hey, that's another episode to cover sometime. We're all familiar with that opening song by Pink Floyd, Another Brick in a Wall. It's in reference to the stale and zombification education system of England back in the 70s, programming people to be like zombies. No kidding. Watch the official video and you'll see that. For people, there's a program installed in us. We were born with it. It's called sin. And there's only one cure. We'll be glad to visit with you about that cure. Uh, but tonight, what we have is an episode that deals with one of the byproducts of sin. And that's the bricks we use because of life and how we cope with the hurts, habits, and hangups. Remember, we all have some form of hurt, habit, or hangup. And it's a byproduct of sin. And so the way we deal with that, I want you to think about the relation to bricks. Hence the brick in the wall. Because we all have some hurt, habit, or hang up, and we all deal with them. And mostly we can deal with them in unhealthy ways, but God's got a better way. The Apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians verses 3 through 5 in, in chapter 10. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or fleshly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And what we're going to narrow down on for these next few minutes is our, our warfare, our weapons of are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The word stronghold is used over 50 times in the Bible, usually in reference to a heavily fortified containment or a wall or a castle, something like that. But in this scripture, it is used figuratively of a false argument in which a person seeks shelter, a safe place to escape reality. Listen to that again. It is a false argument in which a person seeks shelter, a safe place. How exactly do we develop these strongholds? Remember, it's a fortress that we build to protect ourselves from reality. So that's why we're using the illustration of the bricks. Is there one prevailing problem that Satan seems to always target you with? Some sin, some temptation that Satan, man, is like he's got you bullseyed in. He knows exactly your weak spot. What you can do is we list some of these things off is maybe keep track of them by counting on your fingers. And don't worry, we're, we're not going to ask you to, for your total number at the end. But think about these things. Which one of these things does Satan really seem to, to bug you about or to entrap you with? Things like worry, anxiety, being critical, your temper, anger, rage, depression. Maybe it's poor self-esteem, feelings of inadequacy. Maybe you're not pretty enough, talented enough. Or you feel like you're just not good enough. Perhaps it's unforgiveness, selfishness, lies that we believe about ourselves. Maybe it's pursuing our fleshly desires like lust and adultery, pornography, but also greed, materialism. Maybe it's damaged relationships, skepticism, untrusting. Perhaps it's fellowshipping with darkness to conform to it, to fit in, and to be accepted. And perhaps your stronghold 
is the way that we've been adapting to deal with or cope with our hurts, habits, and hangups. Like food disorders, denial, pride, unforgiveness, more depression, pornography, shopping, drugs, drunkenness, bitterness, callousness, manipulation, lying, shame, guilt, condemnation, or even suicidal thoughts. We've allowed the devil to entrap us, brick us into a tomb, a wall, a wall that we built all along the master builder in our life, God, has a total different plan. We've violated and ignored his plan for our lives and how to deal with the hurts, habits, and hangups. You see what we do, we rationalize these bricks, these strongholds. We conform it to our thinking in order for us to seemingly try to deal with it. We rationalize it. We justify it. It's because of what they did is what we keep telling ourselves. Or we normalize it. It's just the way I am or everybody is doing this. Here's a new word I created. We prettify it. We dress it up. We change the name. We painted a pretty color and maybe even put a smiley face on it. And the reality is that we've compromised it from God's truth to living a lie. It's still a wall, more like a tomb. It's darkened, gloomy, stale, muffled sounds as we try to develop a safe place to escape reality. What exactly does this look like? Let's take this example. While growing up, you had a mom or dad that you could never please. Nothing was never good enough. You're always a failure. You couldn't gain their acceptance and approval no matter how hard you tried. So you put a brick or two on your wall as we said, well, I'm not good enough. Or forget trying to get my mom or dad to love me or accept me. Another brick of rejection. You can trace through your life, examine your friendships and relationships. Because of our molding and the bricks we've laid as a coping mechanism, we view all interactions with the same lens or perspective which we established from our childhood days. That's a designed coping mechanism from a dysfunctional system that we now distribute to all areas in our life. That's three Ds. Let me say that again. When we do not have acceptance and we're rejected by others, we can't gain people's approval, we put bricks on a wall every time that happens. And that's called, here's the three Ds, that's a design coping mechanism from a dysfunctional system that we now distribute to all areas in our lives. Here's another example. Someone hurt you. You withdraw, you get angry, you get bitter because you don't forgive. Put another brick in a wall. Someone else lets you down. Put another brick in the wall. Someone gossips about you and you don't forgive. Put another brick in the wall. Your boss or coworker rips into you. Another brick in the wall. Your spouse lets you down. Put another brick in the wall. You get hurt, you don't forgive, you put another brick in the wall. So what's the results of these strongholds of our denial, the sin, the unhealthy ways of dealing with hurts, habits, 
and hang-ups, adding bricks to the walls of our stronghold. Here's three main points. Number one, it hinders our fellowship with God. If you're a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, your relationship is secure. There's nothing you can do about the relationship. But if we have built a stronghold, we have messed up our fellowship with God. Number two, it destroys our relationships with others. Think about it. Your spouse, your family, your friends, your co-workers, every area in your life is impacted by this. And number three, it entombs us in our very own prison. Is that you right now?